Now in this lecture, I'm going to show you how to install Kali Linux using the ISO image. You can use this method to install Kali as a main machine and as a virtual machine. But if you want to install Kali as a virtual machine, then it's much better to follow the method covered in the previous lecture. If you have any issues with that method, then please add these issues in the discussions and I'll respond to you and help you fix them. Don't use this method to install Kali Linux as a virtual machine unless I tell you to do so. So if you chose to install Kali as a virtual machine and you use the method shown in the previous lecture, then skip this lecture and continue with the course. Only go through this lecture if I specifically tell you to install Kali using the ISO image or if you want to install Kali as a main machine. So if you're installing Kali as a main machine, all you have to do is first download the ISO and I'm going to include the download links in the resources as usual. The link will bring you to this page and then you'll have to download the version that's compatible with your computer. So if your computer has a 64-bit processor, then download the 64-bit version. If you have a 32-bit processor, then download the 32-bit version. Now I have a 64-bit computer, so all I have to do is just click on the ISO link in here. Again, if you're on Chrome or Firefox, you can just click this link. If you're on Microsoft Internet Explorer or on Microsoft Edge, then right click and save target as. Now I'm not going to click the link because I've already downloaded this and I have it in here in my downloads. This time we, we can't just double click it. Like I said, if you're installing it on, as a main machine, then you'll have to burn this on a disk on a DVD. There's a lot of burning software. You can research that. For me, I'm going to show you how to install it in VirtualBox to walk you through the steps of installing Kali, not through the steps of burning it on a disk. So. I'm going to go to my virtual box and this time I'm going to click on the new button in here. This will show me a wizard to create a new virtual machine. So the first thing it asks us for is the name of the virtual machine and let's just call it Kali 2017.1. The type of this operating system is Linux. And like I said in the previous lecture, Kali Linux is based on Debian. So we're going to click here and look for Debian 64. Again, if you have a 32-bit operating system, then select the 32-bit version. I'm going to click on continue. Then it's asking me how much memory do I want to give to it. Again, one gigabyte is enough. I'm going to go for two because I have 16, so I have a lot of RAM. But if you don't have much, then you can go for one gigabyte and it's enough for it. So I'm going to click on continue. We're going to leave this option here so that VirtualBox creates a virtual hard disk for us. And I'm going to click on create. We're going to keep the image type to VDI, which is a VirtualBox disk image. Now I'm going to keep this at dynamically allocated, which basically means that VirtualBox will give the virtual machine a small amount of space at the start. And then as we use the virtual machine and use more space, it will dynamically increase the size. This way, the virtual machine will use a minimum amount of disk space on our computer. So we're going to click and continue. Now it's asking us to select the size of this virtual hard drive. Now the size that we select here is the maximum limit. So let's say I'm going to put it now to 40 gigabytes, for example. This will not actually use 40 gigs of my computer. What it's going to do is it will allow the virtual machine to use up to 40 gigs. So at the start, let's say the virtual machine will use 8 gigs, then it will only allow the virtual machine to use 8. And then as I use the virtual machine, if I download more files or install more programs, it will allow this virtual hard disk to increase up to 41.22 now. So when you allocate this number here, it will not be taken out of your space until you actually use it. So I'm going to create. And now the machine is ready to start. Now the machine is not installed. It's only ready to start. Now you can go and change its settings and set it to use a NAT network like I showed you before. I'm not going to cover that because I covered it in the last lecture. But yes, you should make this machine use a NAT network if it's going to be a virtual machine. Now we're going to start the machine. 
Now this is asking me where it should boot from. So this is where you'd be starting from if you put if you burnt Kali on a DVD and you're trying to install it as a main machine. So I'm going to select the ISO image that we downloaded and this is going to be the image that you need to burn on a DVD. And I'm going to start the virtual machine. I'm going to click one click in here to go inside this and then I'm going to navigate down using the arrows to the graphical install and then I'm going to hit enter to enter the installation wizard. So this is what you'd be seeing when you boot from Kali if you're installing it as a main machine. I'm going to keep it the language at English and I'm going to click on continue. My location is Ireland and continue. I'm going to keep the key map to Irish and this is now just loading the installer components. Now it's asking us for the host name for the machine. We're going to keep it to Kali. Going to click on continue. It's asking us for a domain name for the computer. We don't really need this so I'm just going to leave it as blank. Now it's asking us for the root password. This is the admin password, so it's very, very important. So make sure you remember the password that you use here. So I'm just going to type it in my keyboard. And then you'll have to retype it again and click on continue. Now I'm going to keep the installation as guided to wipe up all my virtual hard drive and install Kali. Now, if you're installing it with other operating systems, then you're going to have to go on manual and point Kali to the partition where it should install itself. Now, we're installing it inside VirtualBox and we don't mind if it takes all the hard, the virtual hard drive that's there. So we're going to click on, we're going to keep it at the guided. You can also use this option if you just want to install Kali as a main machine on its own. So you don't want to install it with Windows and Mac OS or whatever other operating system you have. So we're going to click on continue and this will wipe everything and install Kali on it. But since I'm in VirtualBox, it will only wipe everything in the virtual hard disk. So clicking on continue to put everything in one per partition. And this is just showing me a review of what's going to happen. So I'm happy with it. I'm going to click on continue. And it wants me to say yes now to just make sure that I'm going to review everything and then click on continue. And that's it. Now Kali is going to be installed on our hard drive or on our virtual hard disk. Now this is asking us if we want to use a network mirror to make sure that we get the latest software. This will only work if you're connected to the internet. If you're not, then you're going to have to go to no and continue. Now it's asking us if it should install Grub. Grub is a bootloader. So it's what you see at the start when you start your computer and allows you to pick between the operating systems installed on that computer. So we're going to keep this at yes to install it for us and I'm going to click on continue. Now it's asking me to select the partition to install Grub on. And for me, I only have one partition, which is this one. So that's the one I'm going to select. I'm going to go on continue. And that's it. It's installed for us. So I'm going to click on continue. Okay, so now Kali is booting. And here we go. Now I have my login screen. It's asking me for the username, which is root, R-O-O-T, and the password, which is the password that we picked when we installed Kali. I'm going to hit enter. And we are in. Like I said, we'll cover how to use Kali later on. So don't worry about that. And like I said before, only use this method if you want to install Kali as a main machine or if I specifically tell you to use this method. Otherwise, if you want to install Kali as a virtual machine, then it's much better to use the method shown in the previous lecture. If you get any errors while doing that, then please add them in the discussions and I'll help you fix them.